Hey YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul and welcome to another remake video. Today we're going to remake Drake's track Portland, so let's get straight to it. Let's go ahead and set our tempo to 136 beats per minute. And we're going to start off with that flute sound. I'm going to load in Logic's, uh, let me just search up flute, I believe it was called the Native American flute. And that sounded closest, or at least to me, to the one in the track. Let's go ahead and draw in that pattern. Just drag this out to last a little longer to ring out. All right, let's go ahead and just copy this over because it's a fairly similar pattern on the second part, but changes up ever so slightly. This note drops down and this one as well. All right, now that we got our main sound for the song, let's move on to the next one. Create a new software instrument track and we're gonna create those chord stabs. Now we're gonna do this sound from scratch. So uh, let's go ahead and bring in Logic's ES2 synthesizer. And uh, once again, let's put in a far, four bar region. And uh, we're just gonna work off the default settings for now. Let's just go ahead and draw in our chords. So we have our, at least our sound in place or at least our chords in place. All right, then we go over here. And that just duplicates itself right here. All right, let's go ahead and open up ES2 and get this to sound more like the one in the track. So what we're gonna use here is just simple sine waves. So we're gonna use one, two sine waves, and then the third one will be a noise oscillator. Uh, where, where am I going here? Right here. Let's go ahead and move our triangle mixer so that the noise is not so prevalent. Push it to about 5% there. Let's go ahead and turn up our analog knob to about 11 o'clock to get some detuning. Let's lower our cutoff. All right, next let's go ahead and mold our sound with our ADSR. So since this is a chord stab, I don't want it so plucky. Let's pull up the attack. Let's pull up the release to let it ring out a little longer. All right, so that's pretty much the sound right there. I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. All 
All right, so there's our sound right there. Next, let's go ahead and just bring in a nice big reverb on this. So we're gonna bring in uh, Reverb Space Designer. And we're just gonna use a preset that I like to use. It's under large space, plate verbs, big plate. I'm just gonna pull down the dry level a little bit. I'm just going to soften this up with the velocity. All right, let's go on to our next sound. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this track. We're going to bring copy down this MIDI region, even though we're not going to actually use the same chords. Uh, the S2 we are going to adjust in a moment. Let's go ahead and draw in our accents here. So uh, let's go ahead and delete all this. It only comes in on the last two bars of the four bar loop. So uh, let's go here to octave here. Play the chord stabs and that together. So this just gets copied over here. And then this drops down here. So for this sound also, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this up. Let's open up ES2. And uh, let's just solo this out for now. Let's pull up our third oscillator to this guy over here. We're gonna move our triangle mixer back to the sort of a center mix here. Let's pull up our analog knob a little bit more for some more detuning. Let's pull up our second oscillator one full octave. All right, that sounds good. Let's hear how it sounds with the other chord stabs. All right, next, let's go ahead and bring in our bass. All right, so I'm gonna create a new software instrument track. And we are gonna bring in Logic's ES2 synthesizer. And uh, what we're gonna do here is also work off of the default settings here. But let's just go ahead and draw in our pattern first.
All right, so there is our bass pattern right there. Let's go ahead and just adjust this ES2 to get it sounding more like the one in the track itself. So on oscillator one, let's push this up one full octave. Let's add in some detuning here, pull this up to about 12 o'clock. Let's add in some distortion. Let's add in some drive. Let's bring down the cutoff. All right, I'm just gonna pull up the attack a little bit here. All right, so we got our bass right there, sounding pretty nice. Let's go ahead and add in that crazy delay that you hear in the track. Well, it's not too crazy, just it's a nice stereo delay. So we're gonna go delay, uh, bring up stereo delay. And we're gonna use the preset uh, one eight note here. Now the way we're gonna get that stereo effect is we're gonna push our right to be louder than our left. So we're gonna go push this up to about 80%. Now it needs to ring out a little bit more, so I'm gonna pull our right channel feedback to about 60%. I'm also gonna cut a little bit of the highs here. All right, next let's go ahead and just bring in our quick reverb here. We're gonna to go to Reverb Space Designer Stereo. And we're just gonna use the default setting here. And just something like that. On this flute, I'm actually gonna pan it a little bit to the left, because that's how they did it in the track. Let's pan it about 15 here, minus 15. All right, next, let's go ahead and bring in our drums. So let's go ahead and start off with the hi-hats. I'm gonna create a new software instrument track. And before the tutorial started, I put together a Portland drum kit. Let's go EXS24. And uh, we're gonna bring in Drake Portland drum kit. And let's start off with the hi-hats here. So we're gonna draw out the first hi-hat pattern. So I'm gonna push up my brush tool here and we're gonna to go to eighth notes. And let's go ahead and draw that in here. There's a little stutter edit over here. Uh, let's change our value to 30 second notes and brush those in. All right, so it goes something like that, and then it's gonna go into a different hi-hat pattern. It's gonna switch it up. So let's go ahead here, I'll go like that for about eight bars. And then the next hi-hat pattern is eight bars long. And uh, let's go ahead and leave one here. And it comes to be something like this. So 
this drops out here. Kind of get some stops and pauses with this hi-hat pattern. And then we get another stop over here at the end. And then this one kind of goes up a little bit. And so did this one. Actually, this one drops out and then this one comes up. Gives another pause and we cut these two out. And then we get into another straight eighth note hi-hat hit pattern. Let's go back to our eighth note pattern here and draw that in. And we just get that stutter hit one more time here. Change our quantized value to 30 second notes. I think I just put in four there. Nope, I missed one. So our hi-hat pattern first one is like this. Actually, no, I'm gonna stutter this one as well at the beginning here. Let's go ahead and do that. Just copy this. Sounds a little bit better. All right, next let's go ahead and draw in our clap. So we're gonna duplicate this track and uh, let's go ahead and draw in a pattern here. And now the clap is fairly easy to do. It's just on the third beat. Once again, let's go ahead and duplicate this track and we're going to draw in our kick here. Uh, the kick is an eight bar pattern because it changes up a little bit as it plays out. And uh, let's go ahead and find that kick. So I'm going to change to the pencil tool here. It's all the way there, C1. So let's work on our second part here. So that's pretty much the kick here. I'm just gonna pitch up the sample a little bit to get it a little higher here. All right, next let's go ahead and draw in our open hat pattern. Once again, we're gonna duplicate this drum kit pattern, or sorry, this drum kit. And uh, we're gonna create another four bar pattern and draw in those open hats. That sounds good just like that. 
Next, let's go ahead and draw in our 808s. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new software instrument track. And we're gonna use our 808 preset that we always use in pretty much all of our remakes. Uh, we're gonna bring in the ES2 synthesizer and load in the 808 preset. And we're just gonna go ahead and draw in a four bar pattern here, or four bar loop region. And uh, we're gonna go to, down to a nice low octave. I'm gonna start drawing in that pattern. So that pretty much essentially just repeats itself. Let's go ahead and open up the S2 and get it sounding more like the one in the track itself. Gonna pull up the attack a little bit. It has a little too much clicks at the beginning of it. Let's go ahead and down, let's go ahead and pull down the sustain. We don't need it to ring out so long, so let's pull down the release. And let's go ahead and pull up the drive. That's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds with the rest of the instruments. So to speed things up, I arranged the beat off the camera just to kind of speed up this video because I know it kind of went a little longer than usual. So sit back, relax, and enjoy and listen to the beat that we just made. So that's how you remake Drake's track, Portland. For you Logic users out there, I am gonna go ahead and save this entire session for you guys. You can find that as a link in the description box below. Download it and play around with it. All the instruments are actually built in with Logic, so you don't have to uh, worry about not getting any of the sounds. For you non-Logic users out there, I am gonna go ahead and export all these MIDI stems here. So you can load that into the DAW of your choice and make yourself a remake of Portland. I'm also gonna include all of the drum samples that you hear as well. If you have any questions on this, you can ask me in the comment section below. And for more great videos like this one, remember to hit that subscribe button. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Talk to you all soon. Later. Peace.